What's up everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex and in this video I want to talk about the console wars being propped up by once again the, the least likely suspects in Jim Ryan and Phil Spencer. So obviously the two heads, the two leaders of the respective companies, but this goes obviously into the Call of Duty situation and it's quite something. But again, it I feel like it only helps people go after the opposite company, which maybe you can say is natural based off of uh, the lies or whatever that's been told. Uh, I, I, I'm willing to hear it out and to uh, maybe even agree to it. But basically what this all boils down to, right, is that Call of Duty, and it really does center, I mean, who cares about Crash and Spyro, am I right? Definitely not me. But Call of Duty is what it kind of all rests on with this Activision Blizzard deal that this game is going to is it going to be taken from playstation is it going to stay there forever what's going to happen and of course the arguments of well does it make sense to take it away from playstation microsoft is buying them uh does microsoft want it all to themselves would you make more money obviously the game pass element there's there's a lot and, I, and again i'm not really here to debate any of that kind of stuff then we get into more of the legal talk between what seems like phil spencer and jim ryan in which it was, I guess, pitched to Jim Ryan how long Call of Duty would remain on PlayStation. And I will say, Microsoft slash Phil Spencer has always been rather ambiguous to what he means when he talks about Call of Duty's future on PlayStation. He talks about a future of it on PlayStation, but how long? And, and, and does he really mean it? And there's, again, those arguments that play out. But what we have here is pretty now i guess it's is it taking jim ryan at his word well it is i guess but you also have to assume this is going to make its way or maybe this is why it's taking so long or this is what some of those boards around the world are looking at is if there's some sort of like legal document that talks about how basically phil spencer has promised three additional years plus the end of the contract with call of duty if that's in somewhere legally well, yeah, you would understand why maybe Sony does have a problem with it. And, and now, again, you could argue, does Sony need Call of Duty? If you attribute Call of Duty to Sony or Call of Duty to PlayStation, is like whose fault is that? That 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 is something that people kind of combine, right? Maybe you should not have uh, Call of Duty be associated with PlayStation for all these years, and you wouldn't be worried about it. Again, there's different ways of thinking about it. I'm not necessarily here to argue. Let's read out what Jim Ryan said, though, because this is the whole crux of the entire argument. I hadn't intended to comment on what I understood to be a private business discussion, but I feel the need to set the record straight because Phil Spencer brought this into the public forum, Ryan stated. Microsoft has only offered for Call of Duty to remain on PlayStation for three years after the current agreement between Activision and Sony ends. After almost 20 years of Call of Duty on PlayStation, their proposal was inadequate on many levels and failed to take account of the impact on our gamers. We want to guarantee PlayStation gamers continue to have the highest quality of the Call of Duty experience, and Microsoft's proposal undermines this principle. Now, the beginning and the end is pretty much taking shots, right? The crux of it is that middle part of this is what was, I guess, discussed privately. Again, is it like Lee? Is it in writing? Do you have it somewhere? Or was it just like he called you one day and you two were like drinking coffee and he pitched this to you? You know what I mean? Like, where does it, or I guess, when did it happen or how did it happen? Um, you know, the beginning part of he brought it into the public forum, I guess that is factually true. I would argue he brought it into the forum because everybody was asking about it online. But yeah, factually, in terms of who brought this stuff up, it was Phil. The ending is exactly what we were talking about in the first place. So, okay, my controversial thoughts, let's just get it out of the way, kind of like how I feel about it. It's a business, cop-out answer, right? It's a business. I get what Sony is saying because, like, you own the console, you, you do it all, and you say, okay, well, we've had a deal for so long for people to literally associate in their brain Call of Duty with PlayStation. Now, this is no different than Final Fantasy with PlayStation or certain games with Xbox. Like, it, it just is what happens. You associate a game with a console. In fact, that's the whole point of promoting it, of getting these exclusive deals like PlayStation with Hogwarts Legacy, right? It's not coming out just on PlayStation, but because of that partnership and because everything kind of has been under PlayStation's umbrella for the most part, people associate Hogwarts with PlayStation. It's the business. So, again, from a business perspective of Sony, I get not wanting to lose Call of Duty. 
at the same time can you just make the reverse argument and say well you have your own games you can get other games you don't need cod right if you're relying on cod what does that say about you not necessarily the franchise of college you know so that's the reverse side of the argument i get it i get it i also get what sony would be afraid of now again though from microsoft's point of view you could say all right basically what's the what's the talk what's like the scummy move here i guess the scummy move is that it was never really clarified as to what the future holds with these franchises i will say i've never been a fan of the non-clarity not just with this with like with any of it right when you don't necessarily give us a roadmap of well are crash games going to be exclusive to xbox most likely i mean i, I wouldn't expect anything else you know like it's it's a smaller franchise. I mean, small. Crash is big, but it's not Call of Duty, right? It's not Diablo. But it definitely seems like a franchise that wouldn't appear on PlayStation anymore. But we don't know that because nobody's really said it. Now, I get it. The deal hasn't gone through, but this is a many years. I mean, uh, at this point, it's not many years, but I mean, we're, we're getting to more than one. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's a process where people are going to just talk about it online. It's just a natural thing people are going to do. Diablo. Does this mean Diablo 4 is going to be on PlayStation, but not Diablo 5? And by the way, I'm not looking at this as some like Sony fanboy. Like I'm, I'm gonna cry and hide in my room because PlayStation loses. The, I, I play the games where they are. Okay, I will find a way. In fact, I, I found two different ways right here: my PC and then my Xbox Series X over there. So I, it's not a whining thing. I'm simply looking at the fun fireworks that are going on between the heads of these two companies, which again goes back to the console wars. I mean, if you don't want, which I've always said I despise people on Twitter, on YouTube that for some reason have this like magical veil that that nothing bad ever happens to their side. They worship their system. They worship their publisher or their company as like a god. Bad idea really to do that with anything. And then they only pick on the other one and they don't and they ignore the issues with their own. And um, that's in my opinion, that's mentally ill kind of behavior. With that being said, I don't pretend to be like naive or I don't I don't pretend to not understand where it comes from because I, I understand kind of the the backing of why somebody would do something like that and this stuff doesn't help when you have Jim Ryan literally calling Phil which and now again I don't care who you want to blame do you blame Jim Ryan is Jim Ryan is saying well Phil started it and he's making us look bad and he's and he's lying so I'm gonna set the record straight so who do you want to go after? You know, go after both things. Go after one. I don't care. I don't care. But this stuff certainly doesn't help because you literally have the team leaders attacking each other, basically, right? One's lying. The other's going after him and calling him out. Like, what do you expect then the fans to do? Ultimately, by the way, the three-year thing is still kind of ambiguous because does he literally mean three years or does he mean three cycles of Call of Duty? Because remember, the rumor is Call of Duty, once this thing is done, this sale is done, Call of Duty is not doing a yearly release anymore. So and I believe the current deal is still this year and next year's Call of Duty. So we have 2022, 2023, and there will be a new Call of Duty game each year. And then when it gets to 2024, that's where the unknown happens. Their deal is up, I believe. And then three more years. But what if only one Call of Duty game releases in those three years? Is it three Call of Duties or is it three years, which is just the one Call of Duty, right? I, again, like, I, actually, let me let me have my most controversial take. I don't even play Call of Duty. So I, I truly do not care where Call of Duty lie, uh, you know, lands from that perspective, from the fact that, like, I'm not even going to follow it where it goes because I don't play it anyway. I'm not, again, playing stupid in terms of the ramifications of people buying PlayStations, people buying Xboxes, people on Game Pass. Like, I understand it has ripple effects, big ripple effects, but I'm not going to pretend like I care necessarily about the franchise of Call of Duty because I just don't. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be genuine with you guys. So, well, that's it. I mean, um, great. Fantastic. The internet, I'm sure, is going to be a very peaceful place the next couple of days, but we'll see what happens because now he just, Jim Ryan, basically calls out whether Jim is lying about what Phil said or he is telling the truth, well, now I guess it's on Phil's court, right? Where Phil Spencer has to come out and say, I never told him it would be three years or I never gave him a year in general or it's going to be on it for a long time. His long time is definitely not ambiguous. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Make sure you guys are subscribed. Bell icon turned on so you know when all these videos go up. If you want to follow or support me anywhere else, all my social media is in the description below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.